Well, he was right about that, but I was just a world-class salesman, and so I could do that. But I'm, I'm leveraging off. Do you think Hugh, Governor Hugh Carey, financial savior of New York City, financial savior of New York State, the former CFO of Chevron, the former CFO of Royal Dutch fucking Shell, Dry Hole Dyke, the founder of the fucking North Sea, do you think we'd be involved in a bad deal? <laughs> I still remember. I still remember the fucking, uh, you know, speech. Hey, did you practice that speech before you went in? Practice, practice. Yeah, you're fucking right, I practiced. But I gave it a lot of fucking time, too. I can still give it, as you can see, you know, 30 years later. The dream team is what makes this motherfucker work. Do you think anybody that had a fucking more than a 20 IQ would give this fucking skinny fuckhead any money whatsoever? No! No way humanly possible! I won't even go where, where you with you forget. I won't even go there. Okay? It's the dream team. And I'm not, uh, and I'm not discounting, I'm not being, trying to abuse. You're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. You're making it easier for you and the financial institutions to get in good deals. I'm not suggesting for a moment that you're giving them bad deals. Not for a moment. I might make an exception with Tom, though. He might try to slip a bad deal in on him. Or, you know what I mean. But, <laughs> other than those two guys, I'm talking about legit deals. <laughs> legit deals. And I'm only te teasing YouTube. Even, you know what I mean, and Tom wouldn't do that. Okay. We laugh, but... And when you're having the board meetings, you're supposed to have fun. This is, as Sally would say with her Yorkshire accent, this is supposed to be fun. And it is fun. It is. It's fun taking nothing and creating tens, hundreds, and in some cases, billions. If you don't think that's fun, guys, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 have, I have no idea how you think. You know, like we had a slide up there. I've been rich and I've been poor and there's no comparison. And if you don't think money can buy happiness, you don't know where the fuck to shop. And I'm not talking about save the world, increase humanity and democracy and all that other shit that you guys, some of you guys, some of you kids are talking about. But get some fucking money first. Then go save the fucking planet. Just like the Gates Foundation, Buffett, and all these guys, they made a ton of money first, and now they're saving the world, or trying to save the world. And I wish them luck. And it's the same way Sally and I are involved in five, six, seven different charities. And they, but we made money first. We're not marching around the embassy. Global warming, global warming. Save the world, save humanity, save democracy. What the fuck does that prove? Nothing. And some of the fucks watching this thing, and that's what they do. Some of the fucks in this room. Forget, we don't have to go to YouTube. Some of the fucks in this room do that. Or have done it. Hopefully you won't do it once you leave here. But, um, you know, the system works. It just does. I can't, I can't emphasize it enough. You have confidence in yourself, which spreads the confidence in your dream team, which spreads the confidence in your... Extended dream team, your accountants and your lawyers, which spreads the confidence in the financial institutions, which also spreads in confidence to the sellers of these businesses. It's like, uh, you know, uh, a pair, uh, not, uh, when the cards, you know, the cards fall, I mean, but in a good way, not in a bad way. And then one deal promotes a second deal, promotes a third deal, and pretty soon you've made... 10, 20, 30 acquisitions, and then you exit, then you made a shit pot of money, and then you can go save the fucking world. You can go save, you know, uh, try to uh, eliminate uh, malaria or uh, starvation or whatever you want to do. But not, it doesn't work the other way. It doesn't work the other way. Okay, somebody had a question? Okay. Ben, do you ever buy businesses um, for less than 100% of the business? I mean... Very seldom. 
Very seldom. Sometimes I'll take a, uh, I always want, contr I want control. I want at least 51%. I don't want minority stakes. Some of the guys take minority stakes. I don't. I don't like minority stakes. My experience ha uh, hasn't been that terrific with minority stakes. It's like being a minority shareholder with, you know, potentially with some of you guys. You decide you need, we want to exit, we want to do an, uh, sell to an industry player, or we want to IPO, and then after four or five years, you're milking the money, company out of the money, not in an illegitimate way, but in a legal way, and you decide, no, I'd rather be, I'd rather be king of this deal, and I'm going to stay in the deal, and I'm not going to sell it. And so then Dan's got a big chunk of the company, and, you know, why do I want, you know, I, I need to be a minority shareholder with you fuckers like I need AIDS. Better I have AIDS. At least I'll die from AIDS. You, I won't die from being a minority shareholder with you fuckheads. So to answer your question, no, I don't like minority stakes. I don't like minority. And, and I don't, in, I don't uh, suggest or encourage you take minority stakes. 50% minimum. And that's bad enough. I like 51, so you, then you can dictate. But 50% is, uh, you know, bad enough. When to use venture capitalists, investment bankers, private equity. I told you earlier, you use, you let the market dictate who, where the money's going to come from. Sometimes the private placement market is, is hot. Sometimes the, private, the uh, IPO market is hot. <clears throat> uh, sometimes financial institutions, you know, are, are trying to close, or excuse me, a fund that was started a few years ago is trying to uh, lend out or place their last, you know, $100 million or $300 million. Uh, and so you get them at the end of a cycle. But you let the market tell you... Um, what is appropriate for you. And you discuss it with your dream team, your board members, and, uh, and, and you'll make the right decision. Guarantees, royalty bonds, revenue bonds, options, preference share, all that you don't need to know anything about. But there are many, many tools in the toolbox for financing. A lot of people understand, think they understand derivatives. Uh, they don't. Uh, most people, the simplistic to, most simplistic tool are uh, options, uh, in my judgment. And, but there's all kinds of options. There's puts, calls, strips, straps. There's all kinds of different kind of uh, tools in the option market. Uh, especially now, the option market has gotten very sophisticated. Uh, there's commodities. There's all kinds of things. But don't worry about that. Just think simple equity, debt. Or as the Europeans say, debt. Equity and debt. That's it. You, that's all you have to know. Uh, in the beginning, and as you become more sophisticated, and as you do more deals, the whole process, the whole QLA process is about doing your first deal. That's it. Your first deal. All the rest is bullshit. It's your first deal. And uh, all the steps that we've gone through will get you to that first deal. And the first part of the, of the steps is, you know, getting a chairman getting a mentor, and then using him or her as leverage to get the other uh, board members. Now, almost all the debt that you're ever going to uh, get is going to be secured. Secured meaning backed by assets. In other words, leveraged against, you're going to borrow money leveraged against the things you're going to buy. Once in a while, as they say in Texas, once in a while you're going to be able to get unsecured debt. Unsecured debt means there's no assets backing the transaction. That's not going to happen. And I, I can assure you, out of the box, you will never get, well, there's never, never, but I assure you the chances of you getting unsecured debt uh, is pretty remote. It's pretty remote. And even if it's unsecured by assets, they're going to want your signature. So it's going to be secured by your signature. And there's a slide coming up that a uh, guarantor of a note is a fool with a pen. So you kick, scream, yell, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, you can't make me do it, I can't make me do it. But to get the deal done, you do it. 
But you don't ask your directors to sign shit. Nothing. That's not what they're there for. If you want to sign the note, that's fine to get your first deal done. But not the directors. That's not going to happen. No. No, no. If you want to get the deal done, there's no way to... You either want to get the deal done or you don't want to get the deal done. So you either sign the fucking piece of paper or you don't sign the fucking piece of paper. That's your choice. But I mean, most of the kids have signed. Not all. If the deal is so strong, vis-a-vis cash flow, etc., they won't ask for a personal guarantee. But they normally bank... Financial institutions look for three sources of payment. Three. The asset, the cash flow, and you. <laughs> you might be able to wiggle off you. You didn't sign for anything, right? Okay. You didn't. Okay. Robert has always had the deal, our deals, the, uh, the, the assets and the cash flow, right? Have secured the debt. But, you know, but they're strong. They're 20 years, 30 years, Right? Yeah, 20, 30 year of cash flow. Most of the deals that you're going to be looking at aren't going to be have 30, 20, 30 years guaranteed cash flow. You know, you, you'll, you should find deals that have 20, 30 years guaranteed cash flow. So, but normally three, three different, they're looking for three methods of repayment. Three. Short and long term debt is pretty simple. Even for this group of, of you, Financial wizards, long term is a year and a day, short term is anything under a year. So even, you know, even you, you should be able to figure that out, you, you crack financial analysts that we have here in the room. And the only difference is it's the way it's listed in your liabilities, you know, less than a year, more than a year, it's pretty simple. But it's still debt, debt as the Europeans would say, debt, and it's still owed. But it does fall into under different ratios differently under certain circumstances. So they don't uh, long-term debt isn't uh, is severely penalized against your short-term debt. But that's, don't have, don't worry about that. Don't Google it. Just don't worry about that. All you need is the asset to pay, be able to service the debt. That's the bottom line. The asset needs to be able to pay or service the debt. That's all you got to worry about. Okay, well, we're going to do the role play in a second. I told you about business plans or the lack thereof. We don't need that. How to find, consummate, evaluate deals. Okay, we're going to end on this. Your dream team will help you find deals. Or more importantly, the people that the dream team knows. They went to school. They went to the University of Edinburgh together. They went... Oh, where's our University of Dundee boy? A Chinese guy that went to the University of Dundee. Who the fucking thunk it, you know? Unbelievable. When you said that, I almost fell down. Anyway, um, who lives in Hong Kong? Right? Okay. Who carries a British passport? Fuck. What's the world coming to? Anyway, the, it's the people that they know or the people they went to school with. And more importantly, your professionals, your lawyers and accountants, will be a source of transactions, a source of money, a source of deals. The, I.e., that's why if you could get Joe Schwartz and company out of uh, Landstuhl in Germany, that it's not likely that he's going to be able to produce the kind of deals that KPMG out of Frankfurt, or Pricewaterhouse Coopers out of London, or Pricewaterhouse Coopers even out of Dublin or Belfast. That's why it's worth paying the premium to the big four accounting firms and it's worth paying the premium to the accountants. Bye-bye.